We have made a lot of videos on computer science engineering and thousands of students have found that helpful. Now quietly, EC, Electronics and Communication Engineering has become the second most popular course amongst engineering students. And we keep getting one request over and over. Please make a video about EC. The truth is, most students know the name but do not truly understand the full picture of what ECE offers. So, in this video, we will break it down for you. The real opportunities in ECE today, how the future of this field looks, whether the college curriculum actually teaches you the latest skills and what you must do to stand out in this highly competitive field. From the outside, EC looks like a course full of promise, but actually it's like on the crossroads. One road leads to exciting opportunities, but the other can lead to frustration. Look around you. AI is everywhere today, from chat GPT answering your questions to self-driving cars navigating our streets. But here's what most people miss. Behind every AI breakthrough isn't just clever software. It's the processors, semiconductors and circuits, the hardware that transforms ideas into reality. This hardware revolution catapulted NVIDIA to become the world's most valuable tech company, worth more than entire economies like the UK, France, Italy and Canada. What does this tell us? That the opportunities for EC engineers is immense, but only if you're ready to innovate and shape the future. Here's the flip side. While NVIDIA's source, tech giant Intel is struggling, laying off thousands of employees. The message is clear. In today's world, it is not just enough to just be in tech. You need to be on the cutting edge. For many students planning to take EC, this can be confusing. But here's the truth. Those layoffs don't mean the end of opportunities. They just signal a shift in new demand. The industry actually is hungrier than ever for smart electronics engineer who can step up and meet the challenge. So, what is the kind of electronics engineers that they expect today? Be it new NVIDIA or old school Intel, the demand is almost the same. Intel says, if you thrive on solving challenges and are driven by curiosity, join us. And NVIDIA says, you will solve some of the world's hardest problems and discover never before seen ways to improve the quality of life for people everywhere. From healthcare to robots, self-driving cars to blockbuster movies, and a growing list of new opportunities every single day. Both are clear about one thing, they need problem solvers for the real world. Because the electronics industry doesn't care about what you know. It cares about what you can do with what you know and solve some of the hardest challenges of our times. And it's not just companies like Nvidia and Intel. Even global giants we usually think of as software firms like Google and Microsoft are pushing the boundaries of electronics. Take Google, their AI Gemini runs on their own processors called TPUs. And Microsoft, they have built a quantum chip and even designed laptops like the Surface Pro. And Apple, I mean, they design it all from chips to speakers to cameras. In fact, Apple's career page shows how wide there is scope for electronics engineers. Yes, here you could be an audio hardware engineer shaping how airports sound, or a camera engineer making iPhone photos sharper, or a touch ID engineer building the fingerprint sensors that we all use today. Sounds cool, right? Apple isn't just the end of the story. Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink and even Neuralink are tackling some of the world's biggest problems and electronics engineers make it all possible. And it's not all just Silicon Valley and Taiwan. In India, Tata and Mahindra are leading innovation in electric vehicles and smart manufacturing, fields where electronics engineers play a crucial role. Beyond that, by joining ISRO or DRDO, you could help launch satellites and rovers to the moon or build advanced defense systems that protect the nation. So, if you're aiming for top global companies or top Indian organizations, you need to know that the opportunities for electronics and communication engineers is vast. But here's the catch. According to this Niti Aayog report on the electronics industry, nearly 80% of engineers don't actually have the skills these opportunities demand. You've seen this before, but why does this happen? We just saw that the top companies really want problem solvers. And to become one, you need to solve real problems that people face in day-to-day -day lives using these technologies. So the real question is, does the EC curriculum actually help students learn these skills and technologies? To find out, we reviewed the curricula of several engineering colleges and found them to be largely the same. That's a good thing. But for a detailed analysis for this video, we picked one of the top universities in the country, which is Anna University. And here's what we found. A mix of basic math and science, humanities, core electronics and communication concepts, and a plethora of electives to choose from and specialize. So now let's break down what you will actually learn. 
In basic science and math, you will start with engineering physics, engineering chemistry, physics for electronics engineering, statistics and numerical methods, matrices and calculus, and random processes and linear algebra. In humanities, you will study professional development, Tamilar Marabu, Tamilarum Thoritutpamum, professional skills, principles of management, and even human values and ethics. In core electronics and communication, you will dive into electronic devices and circuits, signals and systems, control systems, digital system design, electromagnetic fields, linear integrated circuits, digital signal processing, communication systems, wireless communication, VLSI and chip design, and even artificial intelligence and machine learning. On top of all that, you can even choose electives based on your interest and here's where things get really exciting. Here you get to choose specialized verticals like semiconductor chip design and testing, signal processing, RF technologies, biomedical technologies, underwater technologies, sensor and IoT technologies, space technologies and high-speed communication. And in the open electives, you can pick from space science, fintech regulations, digital marketing, robotic process automation, English for competitive exams, traditional Indian foods, etc. Finally, there is also space allowed for internships and projects. So what's the takeaway? The curriculum does look futuristic with all the subjects that we discussed, but Niti Aayog has something else to say. They say that most engineers lack specialized skills and don't understand the latest technologies because their theoretical concepts are weak. So it's clear, even though the subject names are futuristic, the syllabus doesn't build the required conceptual depth. And here's the consequence, without depth, students can't become real problem solvers. And that's just one of the gaps. We found another issue. Problem solving doesn't just come from understanding theory or attending lectures, it requires practical exposure. Ideally, engineering curricula should balance theory and practice with practice being up to 50% at least. But in the EC syllabus, out of 208 total hours, only 65 are practical sessions. That's barely 31%. And even these practicals are mostly pre-fixed, outdated experiments done in a lab. Students can simply copy the procedure and reproduce results with almost no chance to tackle real problems. And the lab setups in most colleges today barely reflect the sophistication and complexity that is there in today's electronics industry. And Niti Aayog confirms this too. They report that students often graduate with insufficient practical training and very weak testing skills. The report also adds that most colleges can't provide quality training facilities which makes the curriculum outdated and limits practical exposure. So what should you as a student do now? The answer is simple, more internships. Only real work experience through internships can make you into a problem solver that the real world expects you to be. And even the Niti Aayog report stresses that internships are essential to land the jobs in the electronics industry. Why? Because electronic companies invest massive amounts in research and equipment, and they expect you to contribute from day one without wasting time. And what about the EC curriculum? Well, it does support these internships. But here's the catch, you won't automatically get one just because you are enrolled in college. In fact, getting internships in the electronics industry is very challenging. Colleges can't guarantee them and you will have to separately prepare and apply and earn those internships in the first place. And to make things worse, the curriculum pushes internships to the very end, almost to the final year. But by then, it's too late. The competition is brutal and many students don't even land one. And that's why many students graduate without the skills that the industry demands from them. And even if you land one of these internships in your final year, you are stuck juggling it alongside placements, leaving no real time to learn, adapt and build the kind of experience that actually makes you a problem solver. Because this isn't a skill that is just built in a few months. It requires you to observe, practice, fail and try again. That's why you need to look for internships as early as your second year in college. It's tough, yes, but it is not impossible. And some students do break through. Like Rohit, who landed early internships and finally made it to Google as a hardware engineer. And in this clip, he mentions what exactly helped him land those opportunities. Okay, so compared to software, right, it's not that great in mm. hardware, mm. landing and mm. off-campus internship. You can get it, but mostly it's via referrals. Mm. So you need to have good connections with your seniors or okay. alumni Got it. or someone. And you need to ask them, to give you a referral mm. and that's how usually you will land up in mm. an internship because in these companies they look for uh, profiles with referrals mm. generally 
Makes they don't uh, entertain normal profiles. Even Madan, for example, hmm. he got uh, off campus via Chimian sir. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Correct. Chimian sir gave a referral to. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how he got that. Yeah. Chimian sir, for people who don't know, is he was our faculty who taught us huh. on the courses. Oh, my God. Oh, Running circuits. Yeah. So a very uh, cool drop. Yeah, yeah. So it's clear if you want to make it to the top companies, just knowing concepts, doing practicals, and doing an internship here and there is not enough. You need strong networking and communication skills so that you can find referrals that open doors to such quality internships as early as possible in your college career. That's why you should start building meaningful relationships with professors, peers, and seniors. The very people who can guide you and open the doors to these opportunities. And if you get one, you should be prepared to travel away for work. And that's how you will gain the exposure and experience required to crack these final year interviews in your college. But then cracking these interviews is in the finish line. Because if you aren't really ready to do the job, companies will not hesitate to let you go. Let us take Nvidia for example. Their book, The Nvidia Way, makes it crystal clear what they expect from their engineers. We are ultra aggressive. If you came here thinking that you can just hide in the back, collect your paycheck and go home at 5, you are mistaken. If that's what you think, you should resign today. And it gets even tougher. In exchange for the support and the high compensation, Nvidia demands much of its people. Extreme commitment is critical to the Nvidia way. 60 hour work weeks are expected as the bare minimum even at junior positions. The work week can stretch to 80 hours or more during critical periods in chip development, especially for hardware engineers. or as the result of a major and sudden change in the corporate strategy such as during the pivot to ai so when companies pay big they expect even bigger that's why when you choose ec your learning doesn't stop at college with concepts or an internship you must build professionalism show up on time take ownership work with grit and push beyond your comfort zone and if all of this sounds too difficult and you're not ready to push beyond your comfort zone then probably engineering is not right for you but if listening to all of this lights a spark inside you you're excited and energized and want to do all of these things and prove to the world how you can make a difference then probably you're cut out for engineering and today opportunities in tech are bigger than it has ever been before ai space semiconductors quantum the world is moving at lightning speed and with that growth comes competition like never before so don't just aim to finish a degree aim to become an engineer who stands tall in this race because in the end the world doesn't just require more engineers it requires better engineers and if you choose to rise that engineer could be you